Do 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 do. Whoa. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Tiffany. If you're new to this channel, please do not forget to subscribe. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is my very first time on TV watching myself. I just wanna thank God. This is my very first co-star role. All praise to God. Praying for many more co-star cool roles, many more lead roles, many more everything in my career. I am so happy, like I'm so excited. I cannot wait to watch myself on TV. Some of you guys don't know what a co-star cool role is. Basically, when your character appears on a role for only one episode and is in multiple scenes. I'm in two scenes, so can't wait to see that. Anyways. <laughs> back to the main reason why you guys are watching with this opportunity I was able to get from People Magazine ID Network for their season 4 I played the victim Diana Williams who is one of six black girls that were murdered in the 70s in Washington DC by the serial killer called Freeway Phantom it's basically showing um, the background and showing the investigators and just showing the story of the young six black girls from the ages of 10 to 18 that were murdered crazy right moment of silence for them <sighs> i'm happy that i was given the opportunity to bring their story to life and especially now today in 2019 there is so much sex trafficking that is occurring and people do not care about black girls like they just don't and it's so sad <sighs> but enough about me and politics in the world so in this video i'll be talking about my character the behind the scenes how i got this role and yeah just sharing my experience with you guys like i really wanted to be transparent and really show you guys like just everything about being an actress and breaking into Hollywood. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Freaky, freaky crazy. <laughs> Starting. These young girls kill. Starting. What the hell was going on? People wanted some answers, but here's some witnesses of viable leads. I was scared for me and every other little girl. I didn't know what was going on. I thought whoever it is, they could get me too. The police conclusively discovered that the community is in a panic. <gasps> oh, I just lost That's it. me in the intro. Inside your coat pocket is a message for the police. Whoa. I will Whoa. admit the others. Catch me right, the king. Freeway fan. Before I miss myself in another intro scene. This is serial killer. Okay, so that was just it for me in the intro scene, but I was in the intro scene. Look at you, girl! Good. But 10 months later, on September 5th, 1972, the freeway phantom strikes again. My name is Patricia Williams. And That's I my character's sister. sister. I idolized my sister. That was, that's my character. She was beautiful. Real and she was intelligent. <laughs> and I thought that one day she would be a singer or an actress. That's me. That's yeah. two, okay. Diana was 17. And she was getting into boys. And James was <laughs> Diane's first. Girl, I'm annoying. <sighs> my parents allowed her to go and visit him. And she just was told that she had to be home by 10 o'clock. And so after that visit, James waited at the bus stop with Diane for the bus to come, and Diane got on the bus. Stop. This is giving me chills! The next morning, her body is found on Route 295 southbound. She had been strangled. She had white tennis shoes with her name written on the heels, Diane. Authorities believe that Diane is the latest victim of the freeway phantom, based on the way her body had been dumped and the fact that she had been strangled. 
The medical examiner found no signs of sexual assault. However, with Diane Williams, there was semen found in her clothing. Detectives believe that the semen is from Diane's boyfriend, who was with her on the night she went missing. But the boyfriend says they did not engage in sexual activity that night, leading investigators to believe it could have come from the killer. The FBI task force uses all of its resources. They scour over the clothing of all six girls, hoping to find something that might have been missed before. The FBI did cross comparisons between the different victims, and they made a major discovery. They identified a green fiber that was found on all the bodies except Johnson's because of her level of decomposition. And they felt this was common green. I got my little questions were in doubt so I don't be going off topic. <laughs> you know how I get, you guys. Hmm, probably don't because I sometimes edit those stuff out. <laughs> okay. First question. How did I get this role? I got this role by self-submitting myself. I self-submit myself about twice a day. Some actors do more. Self-submitting yourself is basically going on casting websites, looking at roles and see which roles will fit you will fit you that you could play their character. If their roles will always say any ethnicity or will say the ethnicity they want, it will say the character's background, description, and everything like that. And yeah, you just read all about it, see, oh, okay, I see a 20, 20 year old woman, Asian, uh, can't do that. Okay, so I see a 23 year old woman, African American, mm, okay, looks like to me. Okay, but has to be a psychopath. Eh, not interested in that role, keep going. But you guys get it, the basis of it. This role I found on Actors Access, it said the description and everything. It said African American woman to portray real victim. It said People Magazine investigates and it said the episode and everything. So I was like, okay, this looks interesting. African American girl, okay. And then it has an attachment picture because it also said, please look like the photo attached below. And then once I opened the photo of Diane, I saw her afro and I'm like, Afro just like my good old sis back in the 70s. Like Jay said, looking like the 70s is coming from your own. Oh, looking like you came from the 70s on your own. Whatever, whatever he said, it's in, my, it's in my quotes notes for Instagram, but yeah. <laughs> so I saw her Afro, so I'm like, that's me. I could play her with her Afro. And I'm like, I look like her a bit. Okay, I could see myself being her. So I submitted myself, I submitted my headshot my resume and everything and in the notes section so when you submit yourself you could also add notes i added a note saying that i was available for both shooting days it's just good to add just letting cast directors know that you are definitely available because some people submit to roles and then end up not being available for the role so it's just like reassuring to the cast director and yourself that you are committing and wanting to be in that role so I self submitted myself and everything and I was just praying God, I'm like, okay, I hope I get this role, you know, I pray for every role that I self submit myself to. And then <laughs> I got an email. So then I, I got an email and the email, right, it said booking, like booking. And I was just, I did drop my phone and everything, I was like, oh. <gasps> I booked the role, like, wow, like, I'm about to be on TV. <laughs> I'm like, I booked my first co-star role, like, I was, I, was, I was so happy, I was, I was so happy. And we shot in July. We shot it in July, I believe, I submitted myself, like, the first week of July, and then they got back to me about, I think, two days after, and then we shot the following week. So I was very excited, I was very happy about that. Okay, how did I feel about playing this role? <laughs> First off, I felt blessed, like, wow, like, I'm on set. Playing someone, like, this is cool, like, <laughs> started my career. So yeah, um, knowing that my character was a real person was pretty surreal. I was like, okay, so this is real life, this actually happened. I, I could do this. So when I was playing Diane, I was just trying to 
channel in how she felt in both situations that I played. I was just like, okay, I'm Diane. I am her playing dead. Okay, I am Diane. I am her going to the bus stop with my boyfriend. That's the last time anybody seen me. So just trying to get in tune with that. And also to... I wasn't trying to put too much pressure on myself. I'm like, you know what? Her family's going to see this. Everyone's going to see this. I want to make sure that I do a good job portraying her. Like, yeah, I don't want to let nobody down. My experience on set was amazing. The cast, the crew, everyone was so welcoming. Like, let's just say that right there. Everybody was so welcoming. Everybody was so nice. Had the food, the drinks, everything. It was just, it was just, it was an amazing moment. Especially um, for my first day on set we shot early in the morning and it was somewhere deep in the valley of california and they were like okay so you have to play dead i was like okay i got this so after i did hair and makeup makeup was it was cool too because like she put like bruises and everything like around my neck and making me look a little bit um making me look like you know like a little bit dead right when i finished with hair and makeup i walked out on the set with my pa and he let me know like okay so this is what you're gonna be doing x y and z da, 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 da. and i'm like okay boom got it now when i get the director's ready for me everybody's ready for me like huh, boom one two three action you know i go and the first scene is for me to be dead so i lay on the floor real glass real grass real bugs real dirt real everything so i'm like all right so I'm like, all right, okay. The director gives me like the biggest instruction, play dead. And in my head, I'm like, okay, it's so easy to play dead. But then when I'm lying there like playing dead, then he's telling me, do not breathe. So now I'm like, okay, they could see me breathing. Like, let me hold in my breaths more. So I hold in my breath like, for so long, like, I think we filmed that one scene for about 20 minutes, maybe more, but I would say roughly 20 minutes and I literally had to hold my breath, like take deep breaths, like, <gasps> but I didn't hold my breath for the whole 20 minutes, like, everyone on set was very nice, was like, okay, action, cut, and in them cuts, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> in those cuts, I was breathing honey i was breathing i was breathing i was breathing because once that director said quiet on set action i was dead okay and two when like i was being dead and i felt like a bug or something i just i just couldn't stick myself out i'm like you know what ignore the bug ignore the bug you are dead you are dead you are dead but once it was cut. I killed every single bug that was around me. I was like, you know what? This is an experience that I'll remember for the rest of my life. When I get my Oscar, I will be like, <sighs> my first time I said I was killing bugs and I was dead. Experience I'll never forget. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was that for um the first day on set. So it was really cool being dead and everything. Then the the next day on set, I had the same exact outfit and everything. Costume designer, shout out to her. She was so cool. Like, it was like a whole new outfit, but still the same outfit because previously I was dead and now I'm bringing my character back to life. So now I'm shooting this. So now I'm shooting day two, my second scene with me being alive now. And then with that scene, it was a kissing scene. <laughs> child and that was my first time doing a kissing scene and I'm like oh okay like I got this and I have a boyfriend real life boyfriend and I remember I told him too I'm like oh big you know I'm about to do a scene or whatever like I have to kiss someone and shout out to my boyfriend he was really cool about it he's like you know this is like your career this is acting and everything like that I respect it and I was like yeah you know just letting you know so first I was really like scared but then I was like, you know what, I got this, like, it's just a kissing scene. It's not like a sex scene or anything like that. Like, this is like on some PG, Disney type of thing, so I got this. So day two shooting scene, we shot at Sherman Oaks. Right when I got there, I'm crazy because before I went to shooting, I went to a dance class. Like, I don't know, I'm just nuts. Like, call time was, call time was 10 p.m. I'm like, oh, I could go to this dance class at Playground LA for 7 p.m. and be okay and still go sick. No, like, after that dance class was over, shout out to Cisco. If you're in LA, 
take his class. After that dance class was over, I called my Uber and I rushed, like a legit rush. Like, I believe I was the first one out of that dance class. I would never do that against myself because yeah, no, like I got into my Uber, I was braiding my hair again because after dance class I felt like my fro um wasn't the same side. So braiding my hair in the Uber, talking to my Uber driver, the traffic in LA is ridiculous. And luckily I made it on time. I believe I made it like 30 minutes before the call time, which is good, you know. Being on time is being late and being early is on time. I got on set, I met with my PA, um, he reassured me my scene and the breakdown and everything that is happening. I got into hair and makeup, did the whole thing. <laughs> I was talking to my um, hair and makeup artist and I was like letting her like, yeah, I'm crazy. Like I just came from a dance class. And she was like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm nuts. Never do that again. Like, no, nah. like I was so out of breath. I don't recommend that for anybody. If you're about, if you're gonna do something before a set, like you need to sleep and rehearse your lines. You don't need to be doing a one, two, three. Mm. No, just, just don't do it. That's just me trying to be a all star person. <laughs> so did hair and makeup. Hair and makeup was so cool because now I was alive. Like I was alive. Like okay, I look pretty. I'm not dead. <laughs> so we did hair and makeup and everything. She made my fro very big. She parted my fro to the side because we were trying to make me look exactly like Diane. Like I wore everything that Diane wore when she was alive, um, her last scene. So now after hair and makeup, got out. And then that's when I met my co-star Javon. Shout out to him. So my co-star Javon, he played Diane's boyfriend at the time. Now it's me and Javon and we're going over with the um, director and the film crew and everything of our scene and they let us know like making sure that like, we're comfortable with everything that is happening. We're like, yeah, sure. But before we like got on set with the director and the film crew, me and Javon, we spoke a bit because it's like, before I kiss you, I want to make sure like, you know, but not even before I kiss you, before like we're acting and interacting with each other, getting our characters like to know each other, it's really good to like get to know him and get to know himself so I can more like relate to him and my character, our characters can more relate to each other and be comfortable with each other, especially that both of our characters are in a relationship and they love each other and this is like the last and he's the last person that saw me alive so just getting all that together and everything like that it was just very important that we just didn't go on set and just boom one two three action like i was able to actually speak to him and like get on that level with each other sometimes it's not always like that sometimes you meet your co-star right on set like one two three action y'all y'all locked in but luckily right before we was able to go on set we was able to chat a bit um after the hair after hair and makeup in our room now we're on set it's like one two three action it was cool because now i'm alive like i'm playing someone alive i am not dead i'm not on the ground with bugs i am alive with someone else well, we were holding hands at the beginning because we're going to our scene where he's um taking me to the bus stop for him spending some time with him in his town and now he's taking me to the bus stop for me to go home so we're like holding hands looking into each other being very like high school musical lovey-dovey young teenage love affair you know we're talking and then we're kissing we did that show about i would say uh more than 20 times yeah we did that show like 50 times like i'm not gonna hold you guys we did that shot like 50 times maybe i'm exaggerating i'm probably exaggerating i was probably exaggerating with the first one saying 20 but around 50 maybe 40 maybe 35 but yeah around 50 like it was like action cut action cut action cut and following all the directions from the director making sure that he gets everything that he wants to make sure that the crew and everyone gets everything that they want and yeah it was it was it was an amazing experience i the best part was like to be called talent like talent is coming talent on set yada 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 it, it was just cool like tiffany's coming you know but yeah that was pretty much it overall it was such a blessing everybody was so welcoming from the craft the crew 
just good positive vibes i feel so blessed to have worked with such beautiful people to be honest and i really hope that our worlds collide and i'll be able to work with them again in the future here's a behind scene clip in the hair and makeup room me acting the fool <laughs> still being tired from that dance class that i took prior to me getting in this chair <laughs> here's a clip with me and my co-star javon his brother was able to record the behind the scenes for us which was pretty cool to see it from an iphone experiencing it and then seeing it on the big screen of your tv at home like that was cool that was really, that was really dope that was really dope you guys i will be dropping a link where you guys can watch the episode for yourselves if not you could always catch it on id network on your tv guide it's there with this being said do not forget to chase your dreams like if that makes you happy chase your dreams like i am so happy that i took the leap of faith and moved to la after i graduated college to pursue my dreams like it's been some bumps in the roads, but at this moment, watching myself on TV, it's like, wow. It was honestly all worth it. All the headache and everything. All the meltdowns <laughs> and depression and anxiety I've been going through. Like, I'm just so happy and I just want to thank God. That's an amazing feeling. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Like, wow. Like, this is such a great moment in my life that I'm sharing with everyone do not forget to like if you guys digged it and subscribe for more videos any more acting videos you guys would like to see please comment down below anything anything with acting going out on auditions booking something not booking something any type of contact you guys would like to see just go in my comments and shoot me a comment <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching my video, you beautiful people. You guys are awesome. See you guys in my next video. And I'm out.